the way back in 1970 and all the corning of glass was taken corning of glass if you see the historical developments very very important here it is the electromagnetic waves as a rays we are taking and we are and we are always intact with the wired communications early so very early means early means in the telecommunications 2000 uh, 1900 1900 um, 70 onwards so when this actually the communication started means uh, very very way back see in the olden days uh, with the help of light they are communicating so with the help of light they are communicating so all these points are discussed in the analog communications and digital communication systems so after that uh, the power of communications was uh, came into picture as uh, some of the students may, might know that uh, in world war only world war two so at the time hitler these uh, the people developed the antennas very well so at that time the bandwidth constraints are not there so when the bandwidth constraints are not there so it is working but when the bandwidth constraints are there and some other problems for them then different type of communications uh, modulations are developed so at that time they feel that uh, only wired communications is there that is a micro strip so these uh, microwave transmission before that microstrip transmission that is wired transmission after that microwave transmission was came so the signal was aired through a transmitter then it propagating some distance then it come back with a receiver then we receive that and we demodulate it that is one type of in that what happened the entire scenario is rounded about wireless communications so even today we know that wireless communication is very very important so after that if you see the bandwidth constellation constraints are there lagging of signal too many users so way back in 1990-95 so these microwave link stations are established and we use very extensively after that again the very more constraints regarding how to how to accommodate more users that is very very big problem for us so at that time some of the uh, scientists and uh, the industry look into the other alternatives at that time they found out the optical communications the signal through the light or the signal passing through the fiber is one of the best alternative so in this alternative some of the people questioning that initially wire transmission after that wireless transmission are you going back again to the wire transmission that means are you going back that is a big question in early 2000 so most of the people believe in that also why we go for wired wired communications wired communications means one to one we have to run a fiber cable that means we are why why you are going back to the wired communications so for that uh, advantages of fiber optics and uh, in what way it is superior than any other so the type of arguments and the type of discussions were there so advantages of fiber optic communications so disadvantages of fiber optic communications so initially 
one one should know that uh, how this uh, optical communications is useful and how this uh, fiber link how this fiber uh, optic cable use it to transmit the signal so that is a point so if you go to a a, a, a simple historical development so you know the behavior of em waves and its spectrum in fact say light being a part of in this spectrum and also light being an em wave so that is a very important point that means the behavior of em wave and its spectrum so in fact the light being is a part of this spectrum so you know in the entire spectrum light is also a part of spectrum so in this uh, contest uh, in the early years uh, so here please note down some of these uh, if you have the uh, notes please note down these uh, historical uh, years uh, date back from 1621 please note down okay uh, in this 1621 snell's law actually at that time also this uh, in the form of snell's law the behavior of light and all are discussed similarly in 1870 john tyden demonstrated a demonstrated a experiment in front of all the spectators at that time so what he demonstrated what he demonstrated means a simple barrel of full of water he taken barrel of water barrel means a drum okay and from that uh, he made a hole on it in it so what happens at a different height the hole is made so from that water is pouring out because of the gravity the water is pouring out uh, some a distance so then he somehow managed to arrange a light uh, in other side maybe inside or out other side of the barrel so what he observed here is the light is also travel along the water which is coming out from the hole so that is a experiment what the experiment now proves the light will propagate along the medium so that is very very important experiment and it creates it shows that it proves that the light will travel along the medium water is not there what happens rectilinear propagation of light the light will strike to the other wall but whenever it was given say here you can see i will show try to show this figure to you so as i am not here you can see suppose this is a barrel of water now if the water is not there if the light is here and it goes to directly to the rectilinear propagation of light a point when this barrel is full of water when this light this water is now pouring in the line b because of gravity now if the light is here with the water now, now the light is also propagating through the line b so that is the experiment so that was happened in 1870 after that 1897 john william he proposed the rally laws of light of propagation so very very important you know the rally jeans law wayne's law so these are the very important quantum mechanic concepts early 1900s that is end of 1800 century that is 1900 so in at that time rally and jeans proposed the energy distribution of energy in the wavelength so that is very another topic okay so this is useful at that time so rally proposed law loss of light so after that in 1900 mlanks con Planck's Max Planck's views the theory of radiation. You know, 
Planck's constant h. So it, it tremendous. Not a, it gives a very excellent exhaust to analysis for this electromagnetics. Without Planck's constant h, it cannot be achieved. So why actually we can we can see that the Einstein proposes this is called h nu. Here is a, a small uh, uh, thing I have to explain. Actually, Rayleigh and Jeans, uh, these two are uh, very prominent uh, at that time. So they proposed, one Rayleigh proposed, uh, the energy distribution is towards the left, in the wavelength side, that is shorter wavelength side. And uh, Wayne's proposed the right, uh, that is, uh, sorry, sorry, Wayne's proposed the shorter side and Rayleigh's proposed the longer side. The wavelength variation, energy distributions. But uh, these two are not uh, stand for the experimental proof. These two separately. So each individually it is okay. But uh, if you see that uh, one proposal is longer side, one proposal is shorter side. At that time, Einstein came and he and Planck gives the a concept of Planck's constant. That is, energy is not uh, propagating continuous but discontinuous phase of packets. So energy transmits continuously with discontinuous. So that is the concept of Planck. So now these two points coming to the Einstein energy relation E is called H nu. Very excellent concept. Now that Einstein's photo theory 1905 came into picture. So with this the modifications, Einstein again proposed an excellent concept to E is equal to H nu plus H nu naught. Please note out E is equal to H nu plus H nu naught. This is the Einstein gives the proposal. In this E is equal to H nu plus H nu naught, you know H nu naught means half mv square. So now 10, 10 minutes more. Uh, okay, thank you. So after that, E is equal to H nu plus H nu naught. In this H nu naught, you know the kinetic energy, we, we see, we know that. So how this will be useful? So we can uh, establish this in the afterward. Okay, after 1905, please note down. In 1930, William Lamb Jr. William Lamb Jr. guided glass fibers. So he, he proposed the guided glass fiber. So as in 1870, John Tidal the demonstrated experiment now he came into realization. So that one, that is in 1930, William Lamb Jr. So he proposed the guided light through the fiber optic, that is fiber glass. So after that, 1951, transmission of image through, so some bundles of fiber. So that is in 1951. Similarly, in 1953, so Narendra Singh Kapoor, so he's Indian, he proposed the fiber glass with cladding. Fiber glass with cladding. So fiber glass with cladding. In this, it is very, very important. Fiber glass with cladding. After that, 1960, Thar Tharod, Tharod, he invented the laser. After that, uh, 1962, so again Tharod uh, invented semiconductor laser. 1966, co long distance transmissions. And in 1970, Robert Corning Glass Company, and he, pro he provided uh, low profile fiber with uh, 20 dB per km. So if the signal is transmitting, it lasts 20 dB, attenuation levels. After that, 1980, AT&T, and, on, and onwards, now the companies are coming to picture. Now the scientist role is over. Now everything they invented. So if you look into the chronological, the historical preview, uh, preview in from 1621 itself, it was developed. So now, why are you going back? Now, now I want to conclude this today's session. So the question is, are you going back? No. So this very important point is we revolutionarily we changed the system 
the fiber optic cables are now the backbone of entire communications here you have to see why i am given this historical means the perspectives why we need for the fiber optics why we go for fiber optics means so because of bandwidth and speed and also the noise levels and the security and uh, the maintenance these are all the very very good points so with all the points here noise noise is very very less bandwidth tremendous bandwidth is there speed so with the light of uh, with this velocity of light almost nearer to that and also security so no one can tamper the optical cable so it will last the signal will last but we cannot see take the signal from in, inside so no emi emc problems emi means electromagnetic interference and compatibilities these are no so these are all there in the electromagnetics that's why we gone for fiber optics but one the point is point to point link we have to establish for that we will lay down the cable fiber cables so the fiber cable means just glass inside that and around a cladding so whether this fiber cable glass cable is useful for the communication or not there is a point so that's why i explain the historical purview uh, this one development and give the different different uh, key uh, noted uh, years so where the actually this is developed so with this uh, i now i want to conclude and in the next topic we we have to see whether the glass whether the glass is allow the signal pa passing through it what is the loss in it when the signal is passing through the glass any loss in here that is attenuation is here and how the glass uh, is able to transmit any loss are there basic warning loss yes the loss are there the basic loss are we have to go back to your 8th class and 9th class concepts uh, the ray optics yes we have to learn that ray optics um, very beginning from reflection refraction again we have to start our study in this fiber optic communications okay so basic ray theory we have to discuss at least 10 to 15 minutes we have to again brief again on reflection okay from the plane refraction two plane from one medium to other medium and it, and uh, we have to make use of uh, snell's law some formula after that uh, we have to learn the total internal reflection after that the uh, total internal reflection so how the signal is propagating through the fiber so in this uh, you can see a very simple electromagnetic wave concepts also applicable here because you know as already explained that the light your visual light or infrared light or this one is a part of electromagnetic spectrum so only the our our perspective is so light can because we are able to see this in this particular wavelength but electromagnetic we can't see but uh, here the point is the entire our optical communications uh, deal with uh, nearly 800 nanometers wavelength to 1600 nanometers 1600 nanometers so okay so that is infrared after that is after red red means uh, nearly 650 nanometers okay similarly violet means 64 350 to 360 nanometers 347 is the exact violet wavelength so fzr so r2 after r that means 650 afterwards we are using this fiber optic communications now the all loss governed by governed by the electromagnetic the electromagnetic waves governed so those loss are also here but to understand the exact propagation of light we take the help of ray optics that is the point why the ray optics means we initially learn the light movement in a ray with, with the help of a ray 
and we govern some uh, we we take some uh, roles such as Nelson's law and total reflection. So after that, we'll enter into the subject, detailed subject. So that's all now. Thank you very much, uh, Surendra. Uh, I didn't expect uh, this today. Anyhow, uh, I completed this uh, particular historical development and all. Thank you. Please take the attendance. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you, students. Please uh, uh, chart with me. Okay, I already explained that. Uh, please provide chart. Okay. Fine. So, to, we, we, in my class tomorrow, next class, I, I am already explained. So, please go through that. I will share some of the points. So, I have some blog. I will uh, post my blog in, blog uh, details in our WhatsApp group. So please go through that. We have some uh, uh, important messages and important notes.